I'm Melissa Khan with our Monday, June 22nd edition of News in Depth. Good night. First up, boyfriend claims that the woman was having an affair with his cousin and he physically assaulted her. More in this report. The police have detained the boyfriend of 17-year-old Melissa Solman, the young woman who reportedly plunged to her death into the Burbies River on Thursday. Speaking with this newscast, B Division Commander Calvin Brutus said the suspect told police investigators that the two had a misunderstanding and he physically assaulted her. He also told investigators that he and his girlfriend were staying at his cousin's house after they ventured up the river to catch birds. It was there that everything went upside down. He said he found out that the deceased and his cousin were having an intimate relationship. However, his cousin insisted on taking her and that got him upset and he subsequently assaulted her at the house. The commander said Melissa still went along with her boyfriend's cousin and was again assaulted by her boyfriend at the party. The commander said he told officers that he also assaulted his cousin and the woman after they left the party. The suspect Soman and a relative were in a wooden panel boat returning from a birthday party when the incident occurred. The commander said during the course of the misunderstanding, she either fell overboard or jumped overboard. The teen left her Stanley Town, New Amsterdam Burby's home months ago with a young man and was never seen and heard from until her dreadful demise. She is survived by a two-year-old son, Melissa Khan, who's in depth. Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have so much waste to dispose of in the landfill? Well, composting can help us reduce the waste we dispose of by turning our organic waste into compost, which can be used to improve the quality of our soil. Composting is very simple and convenient. You can compost using organic waste such as vegetable skins. Or fallen leaves and cut grass and put this in a composting bin or pile. Compost can help your garden grow healthy plants while reducing your volume of waste. It's a really good way to keep our communities clean and healthy. So, let's all start composting our waste. Find out how easy it is. Call us on 226-2189 or 227-8429 or visit our website, moc.gov.gy. A message from the Ministry of Communities in collaboration with the Inter-American Development Bank. Are you washing your hands correctly? Here are some tips on when and how to wash your hands. Step 1. Wet your hands with clean water. Step 2. Then apply soap. Step 3. For 10 to 15 seconds, lather your palms together. Always remember to pay attention to your fingers, especially your nails and tips. And don't forget the back and between of your fingers. Step 4. Rinse hands with clean water for about 20 seconds. Step 5. Dry hands with a clean paper towel or tissue. But when should you wash your hands? After using the toilet, before and after eating, preparing or handling uncooked food, after playing with pets or caring for animals, after sneezing and coughing or blowing your nose, before and after changing babies or caring for others. Frequent hand washing or using a hand sanitizer with alcohol as an alternative will remove viruses and bacteria from your hands. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHU WHO. Shh! It's your new secret. The all-in-one weapon for perfecting imperfections and capturing flawless skin. A lot of brands forget women of color or just don't understand that we come in all shades. From caramel to ebony, there's such a range. Iman Cosmetics is for every woman and features a line of skincare products and cosmetics including 16 foundation shades, powder, concealer, lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, highlighter and BB cream. Visit us at Lot 75 Swamp Section, Rosal Town. That's behind the market. Or call 337-4422 or 688-9249.
dead to critical in West Coast Demerara accident. Let's take a look. A Father's Day ride trip turned deadly for two close friends from Portland, West Bank Demerara, while two others were injured. The accident involved two motorcycles, CE4961 and motorcycle CH8502 and motorcar PXX 9662. There are Michael Jones and Sar Scott. According to a police report, their inquiries disclosed from the driver of the motor car that he was proceeding west along the southern side of Lidestin Public Road. And as he was approaching a right bend, he saw a fleet of motorcycles proceeding east along the said road, one of which was in his lane, driving at a fast rate of speed. The driver added that on seeing that, he applied brakes, but the motorcycle that was in his lane collided with the right side front of his car and landed on the front windscreen, causing him to lose control and end up on the northern side of the road, where another motorcyclist collided with the left side front door of his vehicle. As a result of the collision, both cyclists and pillion riders fell on the roadside and sustained injuries about their bodies. They, along with the occupant of the car, were taken to the Lenora Cottage Hospital by public spirited citizens. Speaking to reporters, Austin Jones said his brother and a group of friends went for a ride to Parika and back. And it was while they were coming back, his brother and his close friend met their death. He said his brother was a mechanic and he was now trying to build a life. To see a brother lying there in the vehicle back, both feet torn backwards, caught real hard, burst out in tears, everybody burst out in tears. You know? Yeah, man. Real hard. What was the driver saying? The driver, the driver was drunk. They bring in a passenger. Well, the driver left the car and ran away. They bring in a passenger that was in the car. We get some minor injury to the hospital. Drunk, he can't even walk. People are to help. He bracing you up to go into the hospital. But the police apprehended the driver and he was taken to a Perico police station. Get the message. I was the first person to get the message yesterday because I was home here preparing to go and barbecue some things for some friends and neighbors, you know, because we had planned a little hangout. Well, as I setting up my grill to go and light the fire and my cousin come and give me the news, I, I didn't, I'll tell you the truth, I didn't believe it. So I, I called a taxi and end up down to put Lenora Cottage and burst out in tears when I see those bodies in the vehicle back. Over at Scott's house in Samaru Dam, Podrind, West Bank, Damarara, his sister said his death was a big blow to their family. My mom actually got the call and, you know, she like was frozen, started crying and the other people at the house, then all the older folks, they pray about the matter, you know, whatever. So I told her I'm coming back. I left the go and I saw one of his very good friends and he was the one. I stopped and I asked him, I said, we're going out with my brother. Where's his situation? And, that is what he told me that, you know, he was just in an accident. So I was like, how was he? And he told me Tiffany, but you know, uh, you know, I was cope with it now. I'm really trying to cope with it. Like, I, it, I'm at a shop because I'm thinking that, you know, he's going to ride and come in the yard any moment. That's how I'm feeling. According to a police report, the driver of the car is in police custody assisting with the investigation. He has since passed a breathalyzer test. The appellate court today ruled by majority that it is the most valid votes that must be used to determine the outcome of the March 2, 2020 regional and general elections. The three judges who presided over the matter were Justices Don Gregory, Brassington Reynolds, and Rishi Pasad. Justices Gregory and Reynolds ruled that the court had jurisdiction to offer an interpretation to the questions posed by the applicant Eslyn David, while Pasad said the court did not. Justice Reynolds said Jacob has the responsibility to determine the final credible count of the results. Formulation of words is that the commission, having defined it as an objective of the recount, must have intended that those words be given effect to. Accordingly, I find that Jacob did have or does have a responsibility to determine the final credible count of the results, it would be reasonable to presume that that final credible count would require both a quantitative and qualitative assessment of reports and 
a summary of observations submitted to the Commission in compliance with Order 60 of 2020. The reference by the Chairman to Article 177.2 and Section 96 of the Representation of the People Act in our letter to the Chief Elections Officer directing that he prepares a report for submission to the Commission using the results of the recount bring into sharp focus the words used in that provision, that is to say 1772, having regard to their implications when juxtaposed with the words valid votes used in the other legislative provision, section 96 of the Representation of the People's Act, and when measured contextually against the backdrop of the stated objective of the recount, that is to say, to determine a final credible count. This circumstance, in my respectful, my respectful view, impacts directly the validity of the election of the president, and for the reasons I earlier adduced, grounds jurisdiction in this court under Article 177.4, and I so find it. Justice Gregory in her decision said the court is well within its jurisdiction to entertain the motion brought before it. Appeal shall have exclusive jurisdiction to hear and determine any question as to the validity of an election of a president insofar as that question depends upon the qualification of any person for election or the interpretation of the Constitution, and any decision of that court under this paragraph shall be final. And so, to my mind, this court has a jurisdiction in light of Order 60 of 2020 to uh, interpret those words to mean valid votes, if more valid votes are cast. I make the point that uh, this court has no jurisdiction to determine whether the chief election officer's report uh, was valid or not, because in the first place, the chief election officer was not, was not present, was not represented, and all that this court can determine is whether it ought to place such an interpretation on Article 177.4. So it is important to make that point that the court simply has the jurisdiction on the 177.4, that interpretation jurisdiction, which relates back to Article 177.2b, to read the words as meaning valid votes cast, if more valid votes are cast. Justice Persaud, on the other hand, said the motion is misconceived and it should be struck out for want of jurisdiction. Hillsborough is here, to my mind, is not concerned with the interpretation of the Constitution. Those issues fall squarely within the exclusive jurisdiction of the High Court under and by virtue of Article 163b1. The unlawfulness or otherwise of an act or omission is clearly a matter for the Elections Court. In closing, it should be noted that I have deliberately refrained from dealing with, in any particular detail, those core and peripheral issues which may have, which have arisen here, that may be subject matter for consideration by an elections court. This is, of course, in an effort to avoid what may amount to pronouncements or opinions prejudicial to the elections court's consideration of the, those issues properly before it. In the circumstances and for the brief reasons given, I find that this notice of a motion is wholly misconceived and is accordingly struck out for want of jurisdiction. Ezlyn David, through her attorneys, moved to the appellate court to seek an interpretation into several questions, one being the validity of the votes cast. This motion was filed on Thursday after GCOM's chair, retired Justice Claudette Singh, voted with opposition commissioners for the Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield to prepare his report based on the numbers from the national recount. The final numbers included more than 14,000 votes that cannot be verified because of the absence of all statutory documents from the ballot boxes. Retired Justice Singh also said that GCOM could not deal with the anomalies which were discovered during the recount, but that matters for the court. 
In the recount, also the commission said it would provide credible results. And that has brought us to the end of our news for tonight. For these and other stories, visit our website at rdproductiongy.com or our Facebook and Instagram page at Royston Drake's Production. I am Melissa Khan. Good night.